Welcome to this episode of the Think Wildlife podcast. Today I speak to Adam Henson, who is the conservation director of Wild Earth Alleys. This is a US-based NGO which is working extensively on the conservation of various endangered habitats and species across the world. This includes the elephants of Cambodia and the gorillas of Congo. We also talk about the conservation of marine turtles and threatened flora. Join in to hear more about all the great work Wild Earth Alleys is a part of and don't forget to share and subscribe after this episode. Welcome Adam to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on to talk about a Wild Earth Alleys. Thank you. Thank you Anish. It's a pleasure to be with you. So what is the idea behind Wild Earth Alleys? Um, great. So Wild Earth Allies is a, it's a global conservation organization. We were founded in 1981 and our mission is to protect vital areas of our natural world for the benefit of wildlife, habitats, and people. And together with our partners, we focus on locally led actions that protect wildlife and habitats in ways that also improve human well-being. And our lean structure keeps us focused on field level realities, staying community centered, taking decisions and acting quickly. And above all, we're anchored by authentic partnerships um, built on decades of collaborating collaborating together on locally led conservation initiatives. One species which you work with is the growers gorilla in partnerships with a primate expertise. So before talking about this partnership, what makes this species of gorilla so unique and how are they faring in terms of their conservation status? Great. Yes. So growers gorillas are one of the two subspecies of eastern gorillas and the cousin of the growers gorilla is um, the well-known mountain gorilla. Um, in fact, growers gorillas are the largest of all four gorilla subspecies. Um, you have two subspecies of western gorillas um, on the western side of, of the central um, Central Africa Congo Basin. Um, but growers are found only in the forests of eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. And their estimated total population is approximately 6,800 gorillas remaining in four distinct um, habitat areas. The most important stronghold for those gorillas is around the Kahuzi Biega National Park and community areas around Kahuzi Biega. And one interesting um, fact about growers is that they were the first gorillas that were habituated for tourism visitation in Kahuzi Biega National Park in the early 1970s. And their current status is critically endangered. Um, and the primary threats to growers gorillas are loss of habitat um, from conversion of their forest habitat to uses like agriculture and development, um, pressures from hunting wildlife in, in these forests using snares, and also regional insecurity is affecting growers, gorillas, and, and other wildlife in this region of eastern DRC. Are these threats common across the four subspecies of gorillas? They are. They are. Habitat loss is 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 the most um, critical threat. Pressures on forest and their forest habitat from extraction of resources for timber, um, illegal logging, converting forests to other uses for subsistence agriculture as well as commercial agriculture. And there's also an, an additional threat in this area from um, artisanal mining of minerals such as coltan and other um, rare earth minerals in this that are found in this part of DRC. Could you just elaborate a bit on your collaboration with primate expertise? Uh, yes, um, so we're working, we're led by our partner, Dr. Augustin Basabose, who is the founder of our partner organization called Primate Expertise. And Augustin is an internationally renowned primatologist. He's from Ijwi Island um, on the border of Congo and Rwanda. And is we've been working with Augustin and his team at Primate Expertise to protect great apes, um, such as the growers gorillas and chimpanzees and other priority wildlife species inside Kahuzi Piega National Park, as well as working with communities to engage um, on livelihood support outside of the National Park. And this includes working with indigenous Batwa communities 
to develop um, livestock and agriculture and micro enterprise opportunities to increase household incomes, to um, improve well being of these communities, which also reduces pressures on the forests and resources inside the national park. You guys also work on a woman led cooperative in Rwanda. What is the idea behind this cooperative and how? Is this contributing to gorilla conservation? Great. Yes. So in Rwanda, um, we're led by our conservation advisor, Eugène Rutagrama, who's worked in gorilla conservation for over more than two decades. And with Eugène, we've been supporting a women's cooperative called Mberaheza Gahunga, which is um, working out in communities outside of Volcanoes National Park in Rwanda. And we've been working with this women's cooperative to um, develop um, essential um, services for communities in this area, such as clean water. So we've been working to build household rainwater collection tanks, which collect water, and it allows um, primarily women and children who are oftentimes responsible for carrying water long distances. These, these tanks provide household level, clean, safe, and reliable water. And this um, improves their, their own well being as well as reduces the need for people to enter into the national park to collect water and other resources. So, this um, most importantly improves human well being and it reduces pressures on the forest and the habitat of mountain gorillas um, where people historically have entered this area to collect water and other resources. Wild Earth Alway is also working in the Freeland Forest in Cambodia. Could you just introduce us to this landscape? Yeah, sure. So um, Cambodia's Prelong Forest is one of the largest areas of remaining lowland evergreen forest in the Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot of Southeast Asia. And this forest is home to more than 55 threatened wildlife species, including endangered Asian, Asian elephants. And these forests are, are home to a, a, a suite of wildlife and important forests and plant resources that are regionally and in fact globally um, important. And these forests also form an important watershed of the Mekong River which is a lifeline for the people of Cambodia, providing fish and other resources for more than 75% of the people of Cambodia. What are some of the major threats faced by this landscape? Yeah, the main pressures affecting um, Asian elephants and other wildlife in Prelong Forest are loss of habitat from illegal logging, um, forest conversion for commercial agriculture, as well as other development priorities in that area. And then also exploitation of wildlife species in, in Prelong Forest. These are the main kind of pressures and threats to, to wildlife and biodiversity in Prelong. How are you guys working towards the conservation of elephants in this landscape? Yeah, sure. So our, our program in Prelong is led by our program director, uh, Tui Saravatana, also known as Vatana. And he Vatana has more than 20 years experience leading Asian elephant conservation in Cambodia. He has um, become an expert in reducing conflict between people and Asian elephants. Oftentimes when, when habitats are reduced, um, Asian elephants come into conflict with people's agricultural fields and into villages. So Vatana has developed a toolkit or um, an approach to mitigate these conflicts um, that emerge when, when Asian elephant habitat is, is reduced. So in Prey Long, we're working, Vatana is leading our efforts there to monitor um, biodiversity such as Asian elephants, to protect wildlife species with information gathered from this monitoring and collecting data on the status of wildlife species, their movement patterns, their behaviors, and then sharing that information with um, government authorities who are managing, in this case, the Prelong Wildlife Sanctuary. So using that information to inform patrols and other protection measures. And we're also developing, working very closely to develop livelihood um, opportunities with indigenous Khoi people 
who have been who reside in the Prelong forest. Um, the Khoi depend on the forest for basic subsistence, for resources such as timber and fuel wood and, and clean water. So working with communities there to ensure that conservation actions also benefit livelihoods of indigenous Khoi people. You guys also work on the conservation of threatened trees. One of the projects you guys work upon is the Trees of Belize project. So what is this about? Yes, yeah, so the Trees of Belize project, which is led by our botanist, Dr. Stephen Brewer, um, is working to document the diversity of tree species in Belize. This builds on more than 20 years of field work by, by Stephen, who's been collecting specimens and um, cross-checking this information with the botanic literature and herbariums globally to document and identify the range of, of diverse tree species found in Belize. And currently there's no comprehensive field guide for the tree species in Belize. So Stephen has been collecting information and is building a database, which is now um, totals more than 1300 tree species for the country of Belize, which is an, an amazing diversity of species given the size, the relative small size of the country of Belize. The other objectives of this project is to develop tools for improved management of Belize's forests. So he's work, we're currently working on a digital application that can be used by forestry practitioners in Belize for tree identification and as well as to improve management of forests in Belize. And then the last thing that this project is doing is, is developing the next generation of Belizean botanists. So providing opportunities for, for field work and research and opportunities for Belizeans to um, enter into the field of botany and ultimately becoming um, forestry practitioners in Belize. You guys are also working for the conservation of marine turtles. Elaborate about your work on this fact step. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, currently our work conserving marine turtles is led by our um, our director for marine partnerships, Dr. Jose Orteaga, who has more than 20 years experience on community-based marine turtle conservation. And we're working in the Americas, conserving critically endangered hawksbill turtles in El Salvador. We work very closely with our partner, Pro Costa, who's led by executive director, Ani Enriquez, to, protect, to protect critically endangered hawksbill turtles. El Salvador is extremely important for marine turtle conservation as it's home to 50% of the nesting females of hawksbills in the Eastern Pacific. And we've been working with Procosta to develop uh, a community network that protects key nesting areas for hawksbills, that brings um, turtle eggs into protected hatcheries, which are managed by local communities, as well as engaging in environmental education with school groups and, and the younger generation in El Salvador. And the results of this work over, over, year, over many years now has been to take um, turtle eggs that were previously almost nearly 100% consumed in local markets to flip that. And now nearly 100% of hawksbill turtle eggs are now protected by this network of of, of, of community members. So it's, it's an amazing story of conservation and of resilience and success in El Salvador um, for a critically endangered species like hawksbill turtles. So recently, Wild Earth Alley has launched a project in the Great Cypress Swamp in Delaware, USA. So what is this project about? Yes, so um, as part of our, our global trees program, we were working with a partner in Delaware called Delaware Wildlands, and we're working to rewild um, an important forested wetland called the Great Cypress Swamp. And this, this, the Great Cypress Swamp is one of the largest contiguous forests remaining on the Delmarva Peninsula. It's an important forest for diminished native tree species such as bald cypress and Atlantic white cedar as well as serving important watersheds um, in the greater Chesapeake Bay region. 
And the Great Cypress Swamp, we've been able to, working with Delaware Wildlands, to restore and accelerate planting of native tree species, such as the bald cypress and, and Atlantic white cedar. We've planted more than 30,000 trees over the last three years. And we've also, Dr. Stephen Brewer, completed a botanic inventory of the Great Cypress Swamp, which documented an increase of 124% of plant diversity in the Great Cypress Swamp since the previous survey was conducted in 1998. And this, this, these results are documenting the, the successful impacts of restoration that Delaware Wildlands and other partners have done in the Great Cypress Swamp. So this is an exciting project that is um, leading to accelerated restoration of this important forested wetland, as well as for the wider Chesapeake Bay region. Talk about the Wild Earth Alley's Conservation Fellows and the Wild Fund Program. Yeah, so our Conservation Fellows Program is was designed to provide opportunities to early career conservationists in countries where we're working. So this takes a shape in different ways, but just a few examples. So in, in Belize, um, our conservation fellow there is Luis Pena, who is a, a, a expert naturalist and an emerging botanist who is contributing to the Trees of Belize project. Luis has been working on field surveys with Stephen Brewer. Um, he's been working on collecting specimens of new species and has identified new species to science for Belize. Another example in Cambodia, our marine program there has benefited from our fellow um, Shanta Shoreng, who has been collecting data and conducting field work on seagrass beds and the impacts and the benefits of protecting seagrass beds in community fisheries. So she's been documenting um, the condition and the resilience and the restoration impacts of protecting seagrass beds in Cambodia. So this is, these are a couple of examples of our conservation fellows, which again is, is meant to provide opportunities for early career conservationists while also contributing to our conservation objectives and, and our conservation programs in countries where we're working. So how can individuals contribute? Uh, yes, they could visit our webpage at wildearthallies.org. Um, they could also follow us on our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn and um, would welcome engagement and any information that um, that we can provide would be would be most welcome. What have been some of the most pressing challenges you have faced both as an organization and in your personal conservation career? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I would say, you know, responding to urgent challenges that, that come up. Um, Water Earth Allies, I have, through my work with Water Earth Allies, I have experienced um, how a lean structure can enable um, an organization and individuals to respond to urgent challenges, such as um, the pandemic, the recent pandemic um, that affected our conservation work in many, many ways. Local communities were impacted by a reduction in travel and trade. Livelihoods were disrupted. Um, we were able to respond in significant ways. For example, in Democratic Republic of Congo, we were able to deploy resources to respond to um, a reduction in tourism, which affected the National Park at Kuzibiega. We were able to provide rations and support to rangers to con continue doing the work, patrolling and protecting wildlife such as growers, gorillas. So Keeping a lean structure and keeping a focus on field realities has been something that I've, I've learned in working with Water with Allies and being able to be responsive to challenges as, as, they, as they emerge. Um, so I have you know strong belief that increased investment in locally led conservation is critical to ensuring um, sustainable uh, protection of wildlife and habitats. And also that benefits for people must be part of of conservation work conservation investment so you know and lastly successful conservation to me is done by working with partners and being led by partners who are from the countries where we work
So that was the final question I had for you today. So thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. Okay, Anish. Thank you very much.